what are some of the most common mistakes that people make when trying to fix their credit? Like why they come to me or during the process? Start with why they come to you and then speak to, to during the process. I would say the biggest thing that I see people doing is, is um, utilities like cable companies, phone companies, and medical bills. Those are, those are two of the biggest things that we see. Somebody might have paid, forgot to pay a progressive account, um, Geico, you know, maybe a gym membership or a medical bill from 10 years ago because they moved or whatever the case is. So two of the things that people can do, because I always like to take, I always like to talk about the bad, but then I always like to give you a good thing to fix it so you could, so you cannot do that is, um, you know, if, if you honestly don't know if you owe Verizon, T-Mobile or anybody money and you know you've had an account, I'm always preaching proactiveness or being proactive. Call them. If you were, if you know you had a T-Mobile account six years ago and it's not on your credit report, guess what? Call T-Mobile and say, hey, I think I had an account with you like five years ago. I'm just making sure that everything is good with you guys. You know, I'm in a better position now. I just moved or whatever the case is. They're going to ask you for your social date of birth. Nope, everything is good. You actually will call up. Oh, you know what, actually? You actually have a $50 balance with us. Would you like to take care of that? Because you know what's going to happen? You're going to try to move. That $50 collection account is going to pop up on your credit report. It's going to drop your credit score 100 bucks. You're going to have to pay a company like me to get it off. And remember, you, now you're investing. It's like, so it's like, I always tell people, call. If you don't know if you owe T-Mobile money, but you had T-Mobile, call T-Mobile. Call Sprint. Call Verizon. Call the cable company. Call the electric company. Because we see it happen all the time. People will come to us. They, they, they were pre-approved for a house. Next thing you know, right before closing, boom, a $100 Sprint bill shows up. A $30 uh, team, you know, uh, medical bill or something like that comes up, just call them and just take care of it. Is money you owed might be something with it. Now, if it's not yours, then obviously don't pay it. And, and there's ways to get around that. But then medical bills, people have $50 co, co payments they didn't pay. I'm not paying that. They, they go to like LabCorp and don't pay the $15 co pay, or, or they'll go to the emergency room, they'll get a bill and they'll be like, I got insurance, I'm not gonna take it, whatever. They, they can figure it out. Next thing you know, you have all these medical bills in your credit report. Just call your, call them up and say, hey, I have insurance. Here's a copy of my card. If, if people did those two things, honestly, I probably would have like 75% less clients. Wow. You know what I mean? and, and I tell people all the time, you, it's, it's, it's time. It's really all that it is. It's just taking the time to be proactive before any of that stuff happens because now when they come to me, we're being reactive. We're reacting to now the negative stuff. So it's like, that's what I'm in business for is to help people through those problems. But if you just take the time to do it, you wouldn't need somebody like me. And, and then while they're in the program, the thing that people do is they either max out their credit cards or they make late payments. So if we delete five items from your credit report and you're still late or you're maxing out your credit cards, your score is not going to go up. So we could delete whatever we want, but your score is not going to progress because you're, you're still adding negative data every single month. To your credit report let me ask you something and this is a, a a situation that i know happens to a lot of people mm -hmm. let's say you made uh you spoke about verizon you spoke about the utility companies out there mm -hmm. you call them up you pay off whatever you owe and you think you're good you think that's where it ends but so many people look at their credit report and things that they paid off years ago are still showing up. So what is the process to make sure that any of us who get caught in a bad situation, what can we do to make sure that these companies are removing some of these negative marks and, or infractions against us from these overall credit bureaus? So now this is probably one of the only times you hear me say, unfortunately, is just because you pay a collection that's on your credit report or a negative account, it's not going to be removed from your credit report unless you have an agreement with that collection agency before you pay it that is going to come off. Because um, 
there's like another now like i said i like to educate right so there's a there's a there's a, a place called the consumer data industry association which is a cdia every year they come out with uh, like a manual right a credit reporting resources guide the crrg and they have pretty much like a guideline as to how furnishers or people that report information to the credit bureaus are supposed to act right so it's kind of like these are the guidelines if you want to report information to the credit bureaus here's what you got to follow here's the here's the here's the rules and regulations in order to comply with us and the fair credit reporting act and metro 2 standards right so i know i'm throwing a lot of stuff out there but i just like to so, so so that way people when they hear it they're going to google it they're going to look it up and they're going to research it as well that's why i say those names so now if you're a collection agency and you have an agreement with Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, you're pretty much letting them know that, hey, if Jose pays this collection account, I will not remove it just because it's paid. The only way that I will remove it, if it's inaccurate or if it's not theirs as a result of fraud. So brings up a point to where a, a paid collection account could be reporting inaccurate. How? Let's say if on Equifax it shows paid, but then Experian TransUnion shows unpaid and you dispute it, it comes back verified, that's inaccurate because now they're reporting an inaccurate balance after you paid it. But just because you paid it, you can't call the credit bureaus or the collection and you say, hey, I paid you guys. You have to remove it. Well, you paid it, right? Yes. So we're reporting accurate information by these account having a zero balance. You know what I mean? So okay. it's so, crazy. It's no, crazy. it really is, which leads me to my next question. What the hell would I pay him for? If this thing's going to stay on my credit report for the next seven years, whether I pay him or don't pay him, yep. why would I want to pay this off if they're not going to remove it from my credit report? So another great question is because that's in the, in the beginning where I said we try to remove whatever we can and whatever we can't remove, we want you to pay it because even if it doesn't come off your credit report, your data is still gonna be better. Because now you, you might only have one or two paid collections on your credit report or a paid repossession or a paid charge off, whatever the case is. When you go apply for a credit card or a mortgage or a car, they're gonna look at your credit report and say, all right, well, this person has a collection, but it's paid the risk is lower. The risk is a lot less. So you still want to try to satisfy that debt, even if you've exhausted all means with trying to get it off, because um, you're, 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 you're going to be in a better position down the road by showing paid stuff than open stuff that's negative and is going to continue to ding your credit score because now you, you could have continuously negative data reporting every month with an open balance. So I would still 100% advocate, even if it's not going to come off your credit report, pay it if you're not able to get it deleted by disputing the inaccuracy of the account. Because what's going to happen, Sean, is, I don't know, I think in New York is the same way as New Jersey. They can sue you for that debt. Now you have a judgment, and that judgment is renewable every 20 years. So let's say if you have a $1,000 credit card, you didn't pay it, it gets charged off, and now it goes into a collection account. You didn't pay the collection account. Now six. Now you're at year six. At year six, they can sue you. You have a judgment, and if you don't pay it, it could be valid for up to 20 years. So now you're talking about a $1,000 account from 25, 26 years ago that's still open and valid, and I've seen it happen with people from debt from their late 90s that they're getting sued for. You know what I mean? Um, because it's still open. They, they sued them back in the 90s, or the, now it's the early 2000s, and the debt is still valid because you were sued for it and you didn't contest it when it was sued. So that's why I tell people to pay it if it's not able to get deleted because it's going to cost you more money down the road with getting your bank account levied, getting your, gar your wages garnished if you get sued. You won't be able to buy a house with collections that are open. If, you, if you're trying to get a car, they're not going to give you a car if you have a collection account for 50 bucks for a medical bill. You, you know, believe it or not, your interest is going to be either 7%, 5%, or 1920 because your risk, because you have a collection. So that's why we tell people to pay it, Sean, 
even if it's not going to come off. And that's good advice. A lot of credit repair companies are going to tell you, man, don't pay it. We'll keep fighting it. We'll keep fighting it. You're fighting it for three years. And you, you're, 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 you're fighting it for three years, getting higher interest rates, getting higher interest rates, spending thousands and thousands and thousands of money. It, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.